Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? From SlideNerd, this is Bevs over here. In this video, let's continue our discussion of the bank program that we've been talking in the previous two videos. Here, we're gonna work further with the account class and see exactly what can be done. In the meantime, if you guys haven't seen the last two videos, I've included a link to, to those videos in the description text below. So please go there and check them out. So here we're gonna work with the withdraw method that we have and this like I said is one of the most complex methods in this entire program. There's a whole lot of things to check because if you go here read the statement it says the customer must have an initial balance of hundred dollars while opening the account which means even when you withdraw money you have to ensure that the balance always stays at hundred no matter how much you remove. For example if you have one fifty dollars in your account and if the person says I want to remove hundred it's not possible because if you remove hundred then your account is going to have only fifty dollars out of 150 right and that is incorrect because you should always have hundred no matter what and hence checking that is also one of the things that you need to do also there's another thing over here that says the bank does not charge any fees for the first withdrawal but for all subsequent withdrawals the bank charges some transaction fees now this again complicates the process of withdrawing money because we have to check if it is the first time or if it is a subsequent time and do some steps based on that. So just to write half of the withdrawal method, I have written some statements over here just to make you guys understand what is going on. First time we need a parameter here that says how much money the user wants to withdraw. I'm gonna say double how much over here just like what I did for the deposit. Now we need to check the first thing if this is the first time the user is trying to withdraw or not because based on that itself there's gonna be a whole lot of steps that we have right then there is also the case where it says check if the money is positive and money is negative so let's start with the positive and negative thing first because if the money is negative it doesn't even matter whether it's the first time or the subsequent time you cannot withdraw negative money right so that would be the top most condition so I'm gonna say if over here and I'm gonna say how much is greater than zero so if the money how much that the user wants to withdraw is positive that's greater than equals to zero then perform the withdrawal otherwise simply say a message that you simply cannot withdraw money right we can directly put a system.error.println over here so now if the money is positive then comes the question of whether it's the first time or is it the subsequent time that is something we need to check now how would we do that now we can use a simple boolean variable that test whether it's the first time or not so I'm gonna go here to the class account and right here I'm gonna make another variable saying private boolean I'm gonna say first time equals to true which means it indicates that this is the first time so inside this how much greater than equals zero where we have proved that the money is positive I'm gonna check that condition by saying if first time equals equals true then perform the steps for removing money for the first time otherwise perform the steps for removing money the subsequent time so that is the simple problem that we have right now so at this point we are inside this if statement which says if the money is positive and if this is the first time you're trying to remove money then what to do next here we need to take care of one more thing remember the minimum balance should always be hundred dollars that means if you have a balance of one hundred dollars in your account and if you try to remove anything even one dollar it is not possible but otherwise you can remove money right so we need to check that condition so how do we do that well very simple let's make a variable called temp that's gonna simply or we can say temp balance that contains the same value as balance in other words I haven't done nothing great just took the value of balance whatever it is and stored it inside a new variable called temp balance so at this point what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna subtract this money how much from our temp balance and I'm gonna check how much that turns out to be so now let me show you why I exactly made this variable temp balance here if you guys notice let us say your balance is 200 so at this point the value of balance which is 200 is copied inside temp balance what I'm gonna do is something like this I'm gonna ask the user if the user says he wants to remove $50 that is how much equals to 50 then I'm, what I'm gonna do is something like this temp balance minus how much how that is 200 minus 50 which is 150 that means after removing $50 from your temporary balance the amount remaining is 150 which is perfectly great because we need a minimum of 100 in our account at all times right so let's perform that step and I said temp balance 
equals to temp balance minus how much so at this point our temp balance probably contains 150 so we are going to compare this and want to see if temp balance greater than 100 that means it's perfectly great it should be actually greater than equals to 100 because out of 150 if you remove 50 your balance will be 100 which is perfectly fine and hence we should let the user remove 50 right so temp balance greater than equals 100 then that means the condition is great otherwise the condition is not good now let's see a bad condition over here so now let's talk about the bad condition let's say your balance is 200 and let's say temp balance at this point becomes equal to balance which also contains 200 right then if how much or the amount of money that you want to withdraw let's say it's 150 then temp balance minus 150 it's gonna be 50 over here right that means your temporary balance is 50 and that means after removing the money of 150 your account will only contain 50 dollars which is not acceptable that means you cannot perform the transaction right and hence we'll go to the else condition where we'll simply say that insufficient balance to remove something like this let me write a system.error.println over here just to mark everything in red i'm gonna go here and say insufficient balance to remove something like this but let's say things turn into our favor so what we want to do is make our actual balance variable over here to contain the new money that we have after removing the sum right that means here we perform the actual step we say balance equals to balance minus how much this is one of the ways you can do it otherwise you can also say balance equals to temp balance but i prefer this one for now to keep things very clear so the idea is we don't modify this balance variable the first time what we simply do is copy its value into some other variable called temp balance and we try to do the same thing with this variable temp balance by trying to remove the money from that and seeing if that is greater than 100 or not if that's greater than 100 that means even after removing the money the amount of money that we may have in our account is 100 plus and that is good and hence we perform the transaction on the actual balance variable otherwise we simply print a message saying insufficient balance to remove kind of stuff so this was all for the first time you perform the transaction now let's talk about what happens when we do this the subsequent time everything we discussed so far is gonna be same but in addition to removing just the amount of money the, the user as uh, asked to withdraw we're also gonna subtract the transaction fees that the bank has specified now if you guys remember the bank class over here has this variable transaction fees of 10 which means for every subsequent withdrawal other than the first time you're also going to remove this ten dollars which is going to go to the bank right so we have to subtract that as well so now let's go here and write the same code so if first time is equals equals true at this point we have executed everything over here now at the bottom of this else condition when everything is done it's our responsibility to specify that we have performed the first transaction that means first time is not true anymore now this is a common stuff that occurs in Java so the first time you run this it's gonna go to this if condition it's gonna say first time is true all these statements are gonna run and then first time will become false the next time you run this method over here this is not gonna go to this if condition at all it will go to this else condition and the conditions or the statements inside this will start running here let's do the same thing I'm gonna say double temp balance equals to balance the same thing copy the balance value inside this and now let's do the same thing but this time let's add one more thing I'm gonna say temp balance equals to temp balance minus the money that the user has asked to withdraw minus the transaction fees that the bank has specified now if you guys remember go up this transaction fees is in a separate class which is the bank class now I should ideally make this static so that we can directly access it but for now I'm not doing that what I'm gonna do is create an object of the bank class by saying bank over here and say bank bank is new bank and then use that object bank that we just use and say get transaction fees as you guys notice this is the reason I wrote that method now this bank dot get transaction fees which is right here at the top is supposed to return this value transaction fees so let's write code for that I'm gonna go here I wanna say return transaction fees make the return type as double and this is the reason why I keep saying don't worry about the return types 
and what is going to go inside the method in the beginning you can build everything slowly and steadily so in other words we are trying to remove whatever amount the user has asked and we're also going to remove what transaction fees the bank is charging and now again we perform the same check which says if that is greater than 100 that means it's perfect otherwise don't do it right let's copy paste that if else over here and this time I'm gonna say if temp balance greater than equals 100 then from the original balance remove the amount of money that the user has asked and also remove the transaction fees that the bank has specified right and otherwise you can simply say insufficient balance to remove so at this point we have total control in the else condition and the if condition as to how things work so let's again revise what was going on inside the withdraw method first we ask the user how much he wants to withdraw then we check if that money is greater than zero if it is not greater than zero we went here at the bottom and we said that please ensure that the amount is not negative now if it is greater than zero then we checked something by saying if first time is true now initially if you go here at the top inside our account class the variable first time is actually true which means this condition is going to execute the first time you run this right that then what we tried to do was copy the value of balance inside a new variable from this variable try to reduce the money that the user has asked by saying temp balance minus how much and after reducing the money store the new value inside the same variable temp balance and check if that is greater than 100 because at all times we want hundred dollars inside our account whether you remove money or not and hence we have to check this condition if it is greater than hundred that means it's perfect and we can actually go ahead and remove the money from our real balance so that's why we said balance equals to balance minus how much over here otherwise we simply printed a message saying insufficient balance to remove and at the bottom of everything since we executed all these statements it means that the first time transaction has been performed and hence we say first time equals to false over here and in the else part we go here and we create the bank account object for a reason because we need to access the transaction fees that the bank is charging the same things happen here again we try to remove the money that the user wants and the money that the bank is going to charge for the transaction fees from the temp balance which is nothing but a copy of our actual balance and again we check the same thing by saying if that money is greater than 100 which means it's perfect we can perform the transaction and hence from the real balance re reduce the amount the user has asked reduce the amount the bank has asked and otherwise if that doesn't work simply say that the user that hey man this is insufficient balance and hence we cannot perform the transaction so this is the withdrawal method take a deep breather and go through this method again because this is a little tricky and a little complicated if you're a beginner so in the next video we'll further build upon this program that we have and see exactly how it's gonna work in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below thanks for watching catch you guys in the next video have a nice day